There we go, good day. Hi, how are you? I've done it again. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, that's the one thing I don't check. G'day, hi, how are you? I'll do it, I'll do it better this time. I'm Steve Hay, this is Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop and grab a seat next to the bench. Got some stuff happening. And Roy, g'day, mate, how are you? Lovely to have you on. First in the, first in the shed. You can get the prime position. Work out where you want to stand and bags your spot. There you go, Michael, how are you? G'day, duck! Oh, mate, you missed Justin Johnson. That, that was a good show, that one. I enjoyed that. I'm referring to, Duck made a comment on a um, video I did oh, about five years ago now with Justin Johnson, impresario, guitar virtuoso uh, chap. He's just he's a lovely guy, extremely talented, and we were fortunate enough to have him on one of the very early Woodworking Masters class TV shows. I think it was the second season. So, yeah, that was good fun. So, good to have you here, Duck. Hey, oh, we can sing it. Oh, no, Bob's not here. It's cold, mate. In fact, it's... Well, it's not that cold. Hang on, let me have a look. If I have the glasses on, I'll be right. I've got one of those new whiz-bang 18 degrees. There you go. What's that say? Oh, no. What? Is it really? Oh, yeah, okay. I, I was just looking at the calendar. It's the 3rd of June. Oh, check with me. It is 18 degrees in the shed, 57% humidity. We've got one of these things. Where is it? I'll show you. I'll show you, show you, show you. Up on the wall above the monitors. There you go. I bought myself a digital clock, and it's got the date and the time and the temperature and the relative humidity, which, I mean, really, thermometers. Let's face it, who cares? Get out of bed. Who cares what the temperature is? It's either cold or it's not cold. Just because someone tells me it's nine degrees doesn't make me feel any better, any warmer, or any more secure. So, there we go. All right. What I, what I said in the... Who was, g'day, Frank. How are you? David, hi. Chad, g'day. Ah, oh, 63 here. I don't know what... 18 is. Do you double it and add 24, do you? So that's got to be 36, 40, 50 degrees. <coughs> Who knows? Just getting into warm weather for me. As you go, oh, mate, it's, it's well, I'm big wusses, aren't we? 18 degrees. I used to, I used to, many moons ago, live in the snow fields. And it was fine. It was above 8 degrees. You didn't even bother putting a, you know, rugging up. And then I moved from there to where I am now. Not this exact place, but I moved to Brisbane. And everyone would be walking around with jumpers on at 22 degrees. I don't think I wore a jumper for about six years when we came up to Brisbane. But now I do. And then I've got <coughs> one of my sons. <coughs> oh, don't tell me I'm going to be croaky today. One of my sons lived in Canada. And he's turned into a wuss. Steve-o, if you're watching, you should be at work. But, um, yeah, he's in Sydney at the moment, 10 degrees, and he's going, oh, it's cold. And he used to have, what was it, minus 32 degrees with the wind chill factor thrown in. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, what I did say, what I did say. G'day, Ed. Uh, and JB. Hello from Canada. Well, you'll know what I'm talking about, JB. He was over in Ottawa, and... Now 10 degrees and he's complaining that it's cold. I don't know if, if you saw the um, uh, stream I did with Mike Davies from Record Power. He uh, currently lives in New Zealand but travels around the world. He was in England a couple of weeks ago. And on that stream he said he vowed when he left England he would never complain about the cold again. Well, Mike... If we do that trip, mate, if you're watching, if we do that trip and we go out west, especially in July, you're allowed to complain about the cold because there'll be frost on the ground. Speaking of Mike Davies and record power, that's what I'm going to do today. Those of you that know, Salvador, hello from Sicily. Well, g'day from Salvador, Bello, Bellissimo, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. We know what you mean. So, good day back from Brisbane, Australia, Salvatore. 
How's the workshop coming along for the class? Yeah, we're getting there, mate. We're actually getting there. Um, I can see progress. What's happened, I'm combining the two. I'm still doing woodworking classes, but I'm also going to do blacksmithing classes. So the blacksmithing workshop is actually in front of the woodworking workshop. So they're both getting a bit of attention. I picked another forge up the other day, an old one. Um, another old one, a bit rusty in that, but that works well. And I'll tell you what I did do. I was, uh, my grandkids, who you know we're bringing our grandkids up, <coughs> they went out to the pictures yesterday or the movies or the flicks or whatever you call them nowadays. And so Sue and I had time together just to sit down and we did in the local shopping centre and had a coffee and a bit of a chat. And then I went for a walk up to Bunnings, which is a group, big green box like Lowe's, a uh, big hardware shop, Home Depot sort of thing. And they had these marvellous things called pizza cooktops. And it's a box about yay big, that high. It's got a hot stone in it and then it's got a shroud around it. And the idea is if you want a wood-fired pizza, you put it on top of your um, gas stove in the kitchen or on top of your barbecue and then you can use it as a pizza oven. And I thought what an absolutely great idea have one and when I've finished in the forge, put it over the top of the forge and cook a pizza. So if I'm running a blacksmithing class, at the end or at lunchtime, we just whack one of these, cook a couple of pizzas over the forge. So that's on the agenda for this afternoon, as well as doing editing because I'm slack. I still haven't done the editing because I've been flat strapped. I'm getting there. I mean, we should try the Western Prairie. No, pass, pass JB. No, I like warmth. I like warmth. Oh. Is that is a, a, what they call a lazy cold? It goes straight through you. It doesn't go around you. <laughs> yeah, no, mate, I do. I, I get these passions and get into them. Actually, speaking of which, totally different to all of that. I've got a mate, um, a very good mate, and he popped. He was the one that bought my forge up from a place called Coffs Harbour, which is about, oh, I don't know, uh, 600 miles down the road. He happened to be down there. So he picked it up and bought it back. And in the meantime, <clears throat> he's, uh, he's got a daughter who's a quadriplegic, and she's obviously in a wheelchair, and she went to a camp that is specifically for paraplegics and quadriplegics and they can go and enjoy all these uh, experiences and adventures that normally would be not available to them. I mean, John, he's, not only is he a great guy, he's a fantastic father. She wanted to go scuba diving, so he organised for her to go scuba diving. She wanted to have a parachute jump, so he organised for her to have a parachute jump. And while she was at this park, uh, the name escapes me, uh, but she went four-wheel driving in a wheelchair and she loved it. So John's got hold of a wheelchair that was designed to go on the beach on sand, big fat wheels. It's actually, it's, it's outside, but I can't get the camera out there. And what he wants to do, and both of us are, are mechanics in previous lives, so it's going to be fun. Um, he wants to turn that into a four-wheel drive. So we've got to make some, uh, I've got some old rams out of a, an old electric lift chair and a few other bits and pieces. But he said we're going to have to make some gears and some steering rods and the only way we can do that is forge them. Well, guess what? My dear wife bought me a, not forge, um, a cast, cast them. And Susie bought me a furnace for Christmas. So we've got all this aluminium and that we're going to melt down and then pour into these casts to make the gears and the um, steering rack. So that's, that's on the agenda for this week. So I'm looking forward to that, speaking about ideas, Mez. Uh, all right. So in the meantime, in the meantime, though this is what I was making. You know, I'm in my ebony phase. These, these things here, I think the first one, the one that's really got the name is the McNally Strumstick. But um, I make one that's it's a bit different. There's another one called the, the Mackie Music Stick. If you look it up on uh, YouTube, Mackie Music Stick. Lovely old chap. I don't think he's with us any longer. 
but he shows how to make one of these things. Mine are slightly different, and I make them a different way. So here's an ebony one that I'm currently working on. I don't know if we can get a better side view of that. So there you go. So that's what the finished product looks like. With uh, I've got to put the machine heads in there, and then strings out. That one's wired up, so it'll go through an amplifier. It'll be electric. This one's going to be the same. I've got to put the frets in. I've got the, the top piece over there and then I've got some ebony for the back. And once I've done that, what I'm going to do, I'll do one, I'll actually make one live. And they're great fun if you've got um, anyone that enjoys music but can't play music and they're like me, they're absolutely tone deaf. You can still make a great sound out of that because it's a diatonic toning, uh, tuning which means every chord is um, a pure chord, a pure note. Oh, except that one's got a six and a half, which is a, uh, it's one sharp in there that's for a, a different reason. Anyway, we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that too. That's coming on. Anyway, anyway, I'm all excited because I'm cold. You all know that Theo and I are going to be back on Fridays or whatever your day is. If you're a Sunday today, it's going to be a Thursday. If you're a Monday today, it's going to be a Friday. So I'll still be doing these Monday streams. And then Theo's going to come out and we're going to do the joint streams on a Friday. So he's going to be um, on the lathe and I'm going to be here and it'll be the setup like usual. But I've got a huge behemoth of a lathe out in the other shed. Now, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I've got enough. Hang on, if I've got enough cord, I'll take you in there and show you. Wait a minute. What's that one? Oh, I'm all tangled up here. Oh, that didn't cut it off. Oh, that's another thing I've been doing, which I'll tell you about. Very exciting. Okay. Now, I can't see where I'm pointing with this, so I'm, I'm just hoping I'll get close. Oh, wait a minute. All right. So, as I said, I don't know if I've got enough. Ooh line here or not but I'll we'll see how we go and I'll just take you uh, into the, yeah, the machine part of the shed and I'll show you the big lathe I've got and you'll see why I can't lug it around is that going to work oh that's a ceiling okay come with me and I'll show you the the big lathe I've got out here that I use how messy. It's not too bad, so I'm not super embarrassed with it. But there you go. That's the big lathe that I've got that I use. You really cannot lift it up. Um, it's a belt drive variable, and I think it's got a two horsepower on it or something, but it's huge. And I don't mind doing it if I've got table legs or bed posts. Don't mention the bed to, to do, but for little stuff, it's just, it's too big. So I wanted a smaller lathe. And um, Theo in the past, he was bringing, that's better, he was bringing his lathe in. But quite frankly, it was a pain in the backside because it meant I had to reorganise my shed. Whereas if I have one, I've got it set up there, it's going to be there always, and then I can work around it. So I had a... Good chat to my friends at Record Power, Mike Davies, and said, mate, can we work out a deal? And we worked out a deal. And so I now have the proud owner of a Record Power Herald lathe, which I picked up on Friday, I think. Yeah, Friday. So it's sitting here, and I thought it's got to be put together. Why don't we unpack it live? and try and put it together live, which could be, as I said in this description, could be an utter and complete disaster. Don't know. Speaking of which, utter and complete I'm getting sidetracked, but doesn't, doesn't matter. I started pulling the MX-5 <laughs> to part yesterday. Got a manual, but manuals are only good to look at when you've broken something, see? So I like experimenting. And boy, boy, to replace the thermostat housing on the little MX-5, the rocket cover's got to come off, which is, yeah, fair enough. The cam 
drive gears cover has got to come off. The front plate that ha um, covers the timing belt and the harmonic balancer and the idler pulleys for the camshaft has to come off. And then there's another plate that has to come off. It's almost half an engine rebuild. Crikey. Where are we up to? Ah, uh, how many projects have you started and not finished this year so far? Dunno, mate, lost count. I lost count. I was thinking about that yesterday. You know, finishing them, though, I don't care. I finish them when I want to. To me, I like going past the hard part. Any idiot can finish it, but I like the challenges of what lays ahead. But actually, I have finished quite a few. Uh, it's just not online and they've been finished and shoop, out they go. So anyway, it's all good. No one has to minimise the impact by reducing the time frame, else it would be in the thousands. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Speaking of machines, I'm in the market for a new joint. I was wondering what you have. If you have one and your thoughts on combination machines. Um, look, if you're going to get serious about woodwork and make, say, furniture, I, I would go for an 8-inch jointer if your pocket will go to an 8-inch jointer. A 6-inch jointer is great for run-of-the-mill stuff, but I think an 8-inch jointer just gives you that flexibility of um, doing wider boards. A 6-inch jointer, you struggle doing a 6-inch board. An 8-inch jointer, you can do a 6-inch board. The other thing is they've generally got a more powerful motor and a longer bed. I'll show you the one I've got. Uh, mine's an old one. Um, I just got upgraded it, actually. It was an older, older one with a short bed, but I've just upgraded it to, I don't know, this has got to be 30, 40 years old, I suppose. That's the one I've got now. Uh, what is it called? It's a Carbotec. CTJ350, but it's got a really nice long bed on it and it's a very nice heavy construction. And I like it. And thank you to Carol Russell if you're watching. You're a sweetheart. Oh. Um, you know, a lot of I've, I've had some people say oh, I'm going to get a 12 inch jointer. Well, really, let's get the right camera here. Um, 12 inch joint I can't see the sense in unless you're doing a lot of 12 inch work but um, an 8 inch will do most of your job because 9 times out of 10 if you're doing 12 inches you're not doing one solid board you're generally doing a join so an 8 inch will do both of that and you can join it together nicely uh, a lot of people have 15 inch Thicknesses, I think mine's a 15 inch thicknesser. So really that's two seven and a half inch boards, which I can joint, join, flatten them, put through the thicknesser. Whereas a 12 inch thicknesser, I personally don't see the merit in them. You ask me about over and unders, not um, a great fan of the over and unders, not because they don't work, but because of the convenience. Uh, I've used one before uh, on several occasions. And the thing is, your machine's up, you'll shoot a board and you'll get it just right. Then you shoot another board, you get that right. Then you change all the settings, you pick up the top, you put it through the thicknesser. And then, oh, hang on, no, I need another board. And then you've got to bring it back and then you've got to re-get exactly the same settings as you had when you did the other ones. And it is just, it is a nightmare. So if you've got the space and can afford it, get a separate joiner and a separate thicknesser. Uh, pick them up second hand. Honestly, they don't wear out. The worst thing that can go with them is the blades. You just need new blades. Uh, the, uh, someone's bound to ask me about what I think of the spiral, um, what do they call the things? <sighs> what are they? Helix, helix cutters with all the little knives. Hey, they are fantastic. They are great. Do I have one? No. Do I particularly want one? No. Reason? When they're new, they're fantastic. I've worked on enough of them to turn them around and sharpen them and even using an inch ounce torque wrench to bring it down to 51 or 52 inch, uh, 
uh, ounce pressure, you break tips. Now, I don't know about overseas, but I know in Australia, each one of those little cutting bits is $10. Now, if you break five, that's 50 bucks. And I've done services on a lot of machines and I've broken a lot of tips. So, yeah, look, they are, they're nice when they're brand new, but when they've been used for a bit, no, you still get lines on your timber. If you're using wet timber, they clog up worse than a full blade one does. So, you know, for my money, I still prefer the full blade uh, thicknesses. The other thing is, you've got to remember, a thicknesser and a joiner or a table saw or a bandsaw is not a finishing tool. They are there purely to reduce waste. That's all those machines are there for. For your finish, you want to go to the hand planes, card scrapers, or if you insist, a sander. So those machines are there purely to get rid of waste, and so the finish really isn't that important. It's nice not to have tear out, that's true, but even um, highly figured, say, maple, I can put that through on my thicknesser and I minimise tear out. And all you do is you put it on an angle and you make sure you feed it in the right way and you skew it and it's generally pretty good and a, a light cut, don't go with the heavy cut. Oh, uh, <coughs> talking about music, was there a music stand or something? That, you, funny you should mention that, Duck. I've been waiting for you to get back involved so we can finish it. It's over there and it definitely will be in the top 100 jobs that we finish when Theo's here. <laughs> be closer to the 100. Actually, Theo said we should never finish it because it's our topic of conversation. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Does Mike own record power? No, I'd say he wish he did. No, Mike is the international marketing manager for record power. Um, I don't know the chap who owns it, but one guy owns it and he's in the UK and a lovely fella. So there you go. G'day, Rob. Welcome aboard, mate. Lovely to have you in the shed. Okay. All right, let's, let's have a go at this. I think I'll finish me dribbling and raving and rambling. Let's unbox the lathe and all the accoutrements. You like that? Accoutrements. That's my word for the day. I don't know what's in any of these boxes, and I've never put one of these before. <laughs> together before, so it could be an absolute disaster. Oh, the, all right, we got that box. Oh, that's the, that's the um, chuck, so we'll put that together later on. I did grab some chisels as well. Um, didn't have all the chisels I wanted, but got a couple there, so we'll, we'll try them without even sharpening them. We'll see how they go. That's providing providing I can get the thing put together. Oh dear, Ooh, this was a half heavy one. Man, while I've got this together, we'll give it a run. And no matter what time that is, it'll just about do me, I think, because I want to get some videos finished so I can put new videos up. It's all been good, okay. Mm. Now this, I'll tell you a little bit about this lathe of what I know. This is a variable speed, electric variable speed, but also it has belts. So you can change the belt um, pulley size and then each one of those configurations can be variably set with a button. So I'm told these look like the legs. I like the colour green. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Four legs. So we know it's not a tripod. No instructions. That's dangerous. <laughs> Giving me stuff to put together with no instructions. There's a box for Bob to play with. Now these, these things here, I believe, um, is called bench mounts. And that's if you want to mount this on a bench. If you don't want to use the legs and you've got a timber bench somewhere, this is a mounting block for the bench. I don't think we use that for anything. But 
The reason I'm using them is it just gives me just a little bit more height on the stand. So hopefully, what am I doing? I'm putting it here. This is where the lathe's going to go. So I don't want the boxes there because I'll get into enough flipping mess. There you go, sit there. Um, it gives me just a nice height to work, to work at. Now, as for the legs, these metal things, oh, they're nice, aren't they? Tell you what, they're heavy. I thought when I first looked at them, I thought they were aluminium, they're not. They are steel. Very, you can hear that, solid. G'day, Ray! Hey, Delta, how you going? Lovely to have you on board. Putting together the lathe. The new lathe, this is the one. Theo, I'm going to let Theo use. <laughs> it's that evil laugh. Um, now Theo's going to be using this one. Oh dear, oh dear, we don't need that. Okay, well look, seems to me I can't put anything together in this way under this big one. This big one, I'm going to have to, oh, I've got it on a trolley here. So, what I might do is, I'll put that down there. I'll move these cameras around so you can <laughs> see. Oh my goodness. Oh dear. Well, let's, um, let's go there with that one. And we'll bring that down. So we might even just bring that in, in here. So you can see, I'll bring this one over here so we can see there as well. There you go, all right. Now, yeah, open this up. Oh, get in there. Oh, this is exciting. I like prezzies. Well, it's not exactly a prezzy. I did have to pay for it, but it's still nice to have something new. Well, that plastic's going to be good for something. That's that, that's what it's meant to look like when we get it together. So if I get something closely resembling that, I'm going to be very happy. No, it will be good. I'm sure it's got good instructions in there. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Nearly ripped my ring finger off. There we go. Another box. Oh, it's got a lot of that um, yeah, protective grease on it. Oh, I've got some degreaser. That's all right. We can fix that. Now, I'm just trying to work out what the best way to get this out would be. And I'm starting to think if I bring it down this way and slide it off the trolley. Oh, like that. I 
I'm just, just altering these cameras at the moment. Okay. You ever notice that? It doesn't matter where you put something. It's always in the way next time you want to do something. There you go. How's that looking? Okay. Oh. As you can tell, that's the, oh that's good, that's the lathe sort of proper, and I think I've got to put the legs on there, yeah we should put the legs on there, oh, um, let me just grab some degreaser, and we'll just take that off. Won't be a tick. I can find some. I know I've got tins of the stuff here somewhere. I'll just whip up to the other shed. Won't be a minute. I'm going to grab some degreaser. Hello, Bob. You yeah, good boy. Bob's out there lying in the sun. It's actually it's warmer out there than it is here. Okay, got some yeah, beautiful super cheap degreaser. So that's all good. All right. Oh, I tell you what, Jack. Just for fun, I'll, I'll go against tradition. I'll open the, I'll open the destruction manual, and we'd better do it. We better do it proper, eh? Oh, oh. hang on. Who's been talking behind my back? Ah, oh. yeah, it is, Rob. It's exciting getting new tools. Emergency stopping the lathe in a silly position. Well, here's a point. Don't get in a situation where you need it. Then it doesn't matter. I don't know. I can't comment because I haven't had a look yet, right? Uh, how did you do the dovetails, if you don't mind me asking? How did you do the dovetails? In what? Oh, duck. Uh... Oh, that's all right, Duck. Just take me stream over. You're right. <laughs> there you go, mate. You hook in. Um, oh. Well, don't ask me about dovetail jigs either because I've got my own thoughts on them. Uh, all right, where are we up to? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, i tell you what. Original... Yeah, well, there 
is something you don't see every day. You know, normally you buy something out of China and it's about that thick to tell you how to turn something on. All different languages. This, that is, that is. Thumbs up the record power. I think that's good. They've got manuals, but they're, they're different manuals in different languages. So instead of having one and you've got to find out where the English is, that's great. One looks French and one looks German, I think. Yeah, there you go. And obviously one in English. So I don't, well, I speak very, very little French. And no German at all. BMW, VW. That's about it. Okay. All right. Now, where are we up to? Let's go side view here. Or side view with me. There you go. All right, so instructions are pretty clear. And there are all the bits that we've got. So now, let's work out how to put it together. I mean, I've got an idea how to put it together. I just wanted to see if they tell you anything different. The machine must be unplugged and the power switch must be... I, some of these, they just make me shake my head. They only write this stuff in there because someone's actually tried it. It's like, do not use the hairdryer in the shower. Oh, please. No, that person was meant to use a hairdryer in the shower because they're not bright enough. Anyway, um, we're going to do all that. No, I want to put the legs up first, I think. Or I want to do the legs because then it's easier to go and do the rest. Here we go. Okay. Oh, let's undo a leg. Yeah. <coughs> I tell you what, I am aching. Oh, geez, I'm sore. And I'm not having a, I'm not a grumpy old man. I'm not having a whinge. It's just I, um, those of you who might watch last time, I went and got some blue gum and went out with my grandson and we were hanging on the chainsaw for a day. Did exactly the same on Saturday. And I've started to come, another idea. Uh, it was at Faulkner, was it? Um, another idea anyway. Is making charcoal, which I make my own charcoal for blacksmithing. Then I got on the internet and looked at what people, uh, what do they call those things? Spit roasts and barbecues. And I thought, there you go, I might do a range of charcoals. Connoisseur charcoals, I'm going to call it. Because I can be uh, species specific when I'm making the charcoal. The stuff I use for the forge is what they call Queensland blue gum. And it is absolutely brilliant because I'm just <laughs> I'm just trying to figure these out. Wait a minute. Where's my black watsits? Oh, here we go. Um, oh, that's got to be for something else. All right. Well, how does that go on there? Hang on. I've got to concentrate because I'm losing it. Oh, okay. That goes on there first, and then that. Go okay. Well, I can't. I'm going to have to do that first, aren't I? Oh, well. I'm going to have to. All right. Let me have a go. I've got to clear the bench. I've got to move everything up here now. Um, yeah, anyway, I started looking up to see what, especially in Australia, what charcoals people like. I mean, hickory people sort of know and any of the fruit woods are, are good. But in Australia, what have we got? And we've got spotted gum, which is meant to be a really good all-round um, smoking timber. So I thought, yeah, spotted gum's no problem. I've got some of that where I go. And uh, black wattle. I've got a heap of black wattle, so I'll give that a go. And then there was another one called she-oak, which, if you've seen, it's a really, really pretty timber. It goes uh, cream through to dark brown with a lot of reds and it's got a brown fleck all the way through it, which is lovely. And that's good for everything. And when I went to where I get my timber, lo and behold, in the middle of this huge timber pile, there, if I've got my phone, I'll show you how big some of these 
timber roots are. Here you go. I've got young Anthony standing. Torches on? Don't be silly. What's the torch doing on? Um, where are we going? Boom, 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 boom. The Anthony's taller than I am. He just turned 15 the other day, so he's good lad. That'll give you the idea of the size of the trees that we're cutting up. He's standing in front of that root bowl and he's not even halfway up it. Massive stuff. Anyway, in the middle of this dump, we've got another one there too somewhere. Um, where is he? Yeah, there's some of the, some of the logs we're cutting up. That's all Queensland blue gum. Um, in the middle of this dump where all the trees are, I found a couple of she-oaks. And I reckon they'll be about half a tonne. And the only way we could get it out was for me to cut it up and then we'd pick it up, we'd throw it, oh, maybe, what's that? 10 feet, 10 foot away. And then we'd pick it up and we'd throw it another 10 foot and then another 10 foot. And I think we did that six times before we got to the trailer, then we had to load it in the trailer and we had to pull it out of the trailer. So there's eight times moving half a ton. That's four ton of timber I had to pick up and move. And oh, I'm wondering why my ribs are sore. Oh dear, oh dear. Ah, <laughs> um, uh, Tawny, hello from Pennsylvania. Well, hello, first time in chat. Oh, it's good. oh you're one of these people. Well, welcome along. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. Um. Da, da, da. Good day, Chevy. How are ya? Mate, it's going well. Yeah, no, look, I, turning's one of those things that I don't get out of bed and get all excited that I've got to do it. Um, and I think it's not the turning that I object to, it's the cleaning the mess up afterwards. Oh, there you go. That's, that's my drive dog. Oh, let's have a look at that. There you go. What are we doing all those? I don't want those. I only want that one. There you go. Where is it? That's the drive dog that goes in the headstock. And I'm guessing this one here has got to be a tail stock and I'm Hoping, 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 it's a live centre. If not, I do have another one. Uh, this runs with a number two Morse taper, which is good because most things drill chucks in that fit. Oh, that's quite a nice one. Yeah, it's a live centre too. There you go. That's a live centre for the back. So we'll, we'll have those in operation shortly, but I've got to move all this stuff. What's this? This might be, this might, this, this might be the, the good stuff in here. Let me just have a look. Oh, it's got a red, red button in it. Oh, okay, it is. This is the business end. Uh, oh, I'm starting to get worried already. Um, that's drive belts, locking nut, and oh, it's the motor with the control. There you go. Oh, that's not too heavy. That's quite nice. All right. And there's your variable. Speed knob there with a, a digital readout. Reset button if you overload it. Emergency stop, on off. Plug in the back. So we'll get around to fitting that one very shortly. So I love the way everything sort of dovetails in. I, I, I was trying to work out where I got onto cutting timber. 
But that was... I don't know what that was doing there. What happened then? What, um, so was I talking away and you couldn't hear me? What I was about to say is what I wanted, the good thing about this lathe is its size. What I wanted was a small lathe and initially I just wanted a bench mounted lathe that Anthony could use and put it on his workbench. But they are limiting. And I've got the big lathe I took you out and showed you earlier for when I'm doing heavy furniture bits. But, oh, ooh, oh that's, that's not nice. Oh, it's, it's all right, it's just, it's got grease on it and it's slipping. There we go, okay. Um, yeah, I wanted a bit that Anthony could use. But also is versatile. Whereas this, when we get it up the right way, I think you'll see, is a really nice size. If you're not doing real big stuff, but you're doing more than, say, just pens, it's a nice size. Let me get a bit of rag. Where's some rag? Boom, 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 boom. Oh, the marbles are there. I got bags of rags all over the place. There we go. Until I want some. Then I don't have any. Here we go. There we go. Oh, this is degreaser. I'm just gonna. Degrease a lot of it so I can actually grab it and use it and turn it around. Oh, crumbs. Where did I put my knife? There we go. Okay. Hey, come with the bill. Good to have you in the room. Whoop, and, but it's good that you've been working a lot. It means you've been doing stuff. Uh, can you possibly, extraction from helps a bit with your show, can you? Yes, yes, that's one of the things that I actually have asked for. Um, but unfortunately, the supplier that I got the lathe from didn't have one. So that's something for down the track. Uh, Theo's got a great setup in his. He's built a sort of Perspex cage with a funnel underneath it going into a small extraction system. But this really, and it's another reason I like it, it's not that heavy with two people. 
And therefore, as I, I've said to Anthony, mate, you want to do wood turning, you take the lathe outside. So that's what he'll be doing. We'll just pick it up. I've got a door there and I'm in the backyard. Run the extension lead out there. And he can turn to his heart's content. And it's just going to turn into mulch. Okay, what have we got here? We've got this going here. That goes that way. Seems to be. Now, we've got to find all these bolts. And that one does that one. I'm hoping against hope. This one does that one. I did say this could be a disaster. But, oh, poo. Hang on. Oops, wait a minute. I need Allen keys. Oh, I've got some here. Have I got the right ones? Ah, oh, look at that. Got the right Allen key too. Yes. Okay. Oh, hang on. What's that one? No, that one's... A... I don't know. They might even give you Allen keys with this. I don't know. I haven't found them yet. But that's all right. We can do it. Another one over here that might fit these. Wait on, let me just go out here and have a look, see. Yeah, you go. Got, got the right ones there. All right, now, how do all these go together? bench feed it is evolved lift the lathe onto a suitable support and get access to underneath that's where I'm doing it upside down each bench foot requires three mounting screws figure nine two which is a mounting screw then coronet bench feet got those six of those so these have got to be two, three, four, five, six. No, that doesn't work. Le this, this, is, this is where you go. What did I do this live for? So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Another one floating around somewhere. Six. There we go. And twelve of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm guessing there for the feet. I don't know what these two tabs do. We'll find out soon enough, I suppose. We can go there. Got six of those, so they've got to go there. That's the feet to the lathe using. Eight mil wrench bolts ensuring the fittings are positioned as shown in nine four. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't sort of... Oh, no, there's these ones here. It's all right. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, that's those. Okay. 
Here we go. Oh. So put that one on there, that one on there. And we'll screw this in. Move all this back. I'm just adjusting these cameras. So everybody can see. Let me just bring that one up. All right. It's the end of these feet. Fit on here. And you use set screw or allen keys, spring washer, flat washer. You can tell when I'm concentrating, can't you? I'm quiet. And the same on the other end. Be careful that remains stable. You don't want it falling all over the place. And we drop these in. Watch this. Far less complicated than I thought it would be. Which is good, because it means you get to play with it and use it a lot quicker. Okay. Now the legs, I think what I'll do is now move this down onto the ground and then I can put the legs on, then I can flip it over which is going to be a lot easier. So wait on, I'll just make a bit of room, move the cameras around. Let me see what shot you got there. Okay. That's where we're going to end up. Um, mum, 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 mum. Let me just have a look at the procedure with these. Oh, now I know what those bits are for. Okay. Ah, <sighs> we've 
God. What are those rubber things? Fit the rubber feet to the bottom of each leg using Phillips screwdriver, as shown in that one. Ensure the washer is placed inside the rubber foot as shown. Okay, well, this is rubber foot. Oh, that's on the bottom. Okay. And then that goes there. All right. So what we'll do first of all, is I move this over to there. We'll see how we go. We might go, there you go. in shot. Look at that. All right. Before we do that, I'll put the mounting feet in here, which is these. Screwdriver. Oh, I don't know about you lot, but I'm having fun. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. There we go. Bum ba dum bum. No, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on that one in a minute, Duck. Um, oh, yeah, Christopher, a broom helps with shavings, but not as much as a leaf blower. That really helps. I'm saving you from saying, whenever have I deprived you, duck, of watching me go through misery? Never. No, that was a, a slip. It was ages ago. Um, oh, hello, Reginald. Catching up. James, good day. Morning, not so sunny Melbourne. It was raining last week, mate. Uh, what kind of things do you turn, Steve, and what? Do you have videos on YouTube? Oh, Rob, I've got 300 plus videos on YouTube. Building furniture, building boxes, doing stuff with hand tools, machines. Basically, check out the channel. Hey, and if you like what you see, if you haven't watched me before, please hit the subscribe, subscribe button. And if you'd like to become a member of the Woodworking Masterclass channel, hit the join button. Eventually, there'll be more videos going out to the members, but those that know and tolerate me know that it takes a time for me to get around to do things sometimes because life gets in the way of, well, John Lennon, so true. Life's what happens when you're making other plans. Uh, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, where are we up to? Um, so you know, what, do I, what was that? What kind of things do you turn, Steve? Um, look, I generally I don't like turning 
because it's turning. I like turning if I've got to do a job. If I'm doing a leg or if I'm doing some ornamental stuff, um, if I'm making handles, um, bits and pieces for a job, I do turning. But I'm definitely not a wood turner. Theo will tell you that. Or oh, the occasional music stand, I'll turn one of those. I just said that just for you and Ray Duck. There you go. Uh, <laughs> what else we got? Uh, yeah, good on you. Theo does my turning not lightly. I'd never live it down if he did. Theo is a much better wood turner than I am, though. He's a master wood turner and I'm yet to master wood turning. There you go. How do you like that? I think that, hey, that was diplomatic, wasn't it? I thought that was very diplomatic. Um, I turn on and off the light. Yeah, good on you, Michael. You'll go a long way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Steve does have an older bench lathe. And, yeah, we, mate, if you were there, I showed them that earlier. No, oh, yeah. Um, due to the lack of use, he gave it to Thea. Theo uses it all the time. I've got no, you know, real time for them. But, you know, CNC's have their use. Possibly not in my workshop, but they do have a use. Uh, and yes, Theo does do my CNC work. There you go. I'll concede to that one. Uh, oh, gavels. I made a heap of gavels, yep. So it doesn't look like that tail stock is supported by anything except locking handle. If that's metal pot, it's in jeopardy. No, no, it's all solid. It was good. Um, but I did say be careful and possibly do what the manual says and actually have it supported on something else. But no, not a problem, Tango. That wasn't that heavy down the tail stock end. Uh, Um, ba -dum -bum. Mm. Where's me buzzer thing in my jiggle? Here we go. I, I think uh, Theo uses easel on his CNC stuff. Um, I was advised, yeah, you can use it through easel, but Corel Draw to get all your, your stuff done and then flip it over to easel. And away you go. Um. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you got your stump, Ray. Yeah, that's it. I can turn wood. Yeah, I'll turn a bit at the moment. There you go, there's a bit of wood. I've turned it. There you go. Done. Um, right, okay. Now I've caught up on all that. Let's do what we have to do on these legs. We'll put these bottom ones in. And you may be saying, why don't I use a cordless screwdriver gun? Very good reason. I've got 12 batteries for them and they're all up in the other sheds. And I've got four, five, six cordless screwdrivers and only one down here and hasn't got a battery in it. So there you go. Uh, so a little end cap, no, go there. Little end cap goes in there and screw the feet on the bottom of the leg. And try not to drop it on your foot. So this little button here goes in there. Just a press fit. Oh, and that was a waste of space, wasn't it? I want to do that one again. I, I know you lot saw it, but... I meant to do it on this camera. And it didn't come up, so I'll do it next time. Screw this one in. See, I'll tell you what, it's quicker than I thought. Pascal, hi, how are you? Welcome to the workshop. 
Nice to have you in here again. Always good when members show up. Oh, it's great when non-members show up too, but gives me hope for the future. <laughs> yeah, good one, James. You're on the money. Although, if you want to get technical, I do have corded muscles in my arms. Okay, now I'll do that again for the video. So if you think I'm repeating myself, I'm not. I'm just doing it to another camera. On the legs. So I'm going to repeat myself, all right? Let's work out which end it comes out. Here we go. On the legs. Just in the end there. It's a rubber stop with a screw in it. That goes in the screw hole. And then just screw that up. So it's in nice and firm. And there we have it. You do that to all four legs. And these little plastic caps fits in the end there. I'm just a little press fit. And you do that to all four legs. All right, I'm back. Ow. I'm back with you now. Oh. Bottom, this is the last one. Sometimes, a lot of things you get, IKEA furniture particularly, they give you spare screws in case you lose one or break one. It's good in one way, especially if you're like me and you do lose things and break things. But it's also very disconcerting because you end up with three or four screws and you wonder, where are those jolly things meant to go? But I think Record Power have given me the right number of everything that I need here, so we should all be good. Okay. Now, I'm just looking at, where would they go? Let, let me see. I know where they go. We've got two, four, six, eight of them. Um, what have I got? Two, I'm just working out my screws. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that could be for the extension bed, actually. One, two, three, four, is it? No, don't know. What have we got? Good morning, Paul. How are you? <laughs> That's all right if you're a non-member, you're in the workshop, that's good. Uh, ZZ, what should I look for in my first bench vice? Um, that it's solid, that's one thing. I personally like quick releases. This is a quick release. It's got a lever on it. Whoops, it's got something in it. And... That was the legs falling down. So a quick release vice is you can open it and close it without having to crank it all the time. Um, and I'd go for at least an eight inch if your bench will take it because there's a lot of smaller ones around six inch ones. You can get four inch ones. They are very good. I'm going to be pleased when those legs get put on. <laughs> um, but you'll find the width is also related to the depth. Whereas if you've got a, a vice that wide, you'll find it's only about that deep. If you've got a vice that wide, you'll find it's about that deep. And depth is something that's important. I like a good screw thread, uh, which I use. I, can't pull one out to show you, but an Acme thread, which is what they put on quick release threads, 
and you want a fairly big pitch on it, if you've got a small pitch, you're wind, if you haven't got a quick release, you're winding, 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 and it becomes a bit tiresome. Whereas if you've got a, a decent sized pitch on it, then you can get more travel with less expenditure in moving the handle. Uh, in all honesty, I would get onto one of the auction sites and grab a second handy. Um, these, when they were new, I bought that. Crikey, when did I buy that? To, uh, 20, 25 years ago, I think, and it was $240 then. They're still coming up. I've seen them on eBay for $120. So, you know, there are bargains around. These Dawn vices, they're much the same. Um, I don't know the vices you've got elsewhere, but yeah, see if you can get a good second hand vice. You most likely get more bang for your buck there. Wooden jaws, because uh, most of them have steel jaws. You have to put your own wood in, in there to make the jaws um, good for woodworking. And that's about it. Yeah, I'd go for quick release, uh, eight inch, and nice solid construction. And make sure your bench can wear it. That's the other thing. So you've got to look how deep your bench is and how sturdy the top is because these need a fair bit of um, effort. And then when you get down the track, if you really want to go Rolls Royce, grab yourself an H&T Gordon Vice. They're not quick release, but oh, gee, they're nice. I'm sure someone will put a link up to H&T Gordon. Um, I've got one on my one of the benches in the classroom, and it's nice. But no, just I'd go and get a a well-known brand one, a Record Dawn Joplin. I don't know any other Vice brands. But yeah, so that's my advice with vices. Um, dear, 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 dear. Did you retract your message, Tango? That's all right. All right, what am I doing here? Oh, do they go under there maybe? I've got no idea what goes on here. You can get, you can go, I've just read that. You can get an extended bed to go with that lathe, I won't want it because I've got a much bigger lathe as I showed you before for one of the extension. That bed there is just absolutely fine for what I want. If I did want one later on, I would get it, but at the moment I don't think I do. Oh, maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know what they're for. Anyway, let's put the legs together. How's it meant to go? What's that one for? Oh. That does something. Oh no, something or other goes in here. But we've got to get this together first and then we can have a look at it, I suppose. All right, let's change cameras. Uh, we'll go to that one. We'll go over and get into the lathe. Legs, put her on her as. steel caps on but wouldn't have made a darn bit of difference because it landed where the steel caps wouldn't have been oh dear let me just move this back over here ah there we go all good Go and get my grandson, shouldn't I even give me a hand? And I think, as they suggest in the manual, you put it up on chocks. But, seeing as I don't have any at the moment, this will have to suffice.
mía. That'd be right. Hang on, let me put something there to. We'll just chock it. Oh dear. Bada bum bum. Yeah. All that fit in there. No. There's a bit of wood. Wood, wood everywhere, and not a. Oh. There we go. I've chocked it. That's the way to go. Oh, now you turn up. Now my grandson turns up after I've dropped it on my foot. Hey. Well, you can, you can help. Yeah, I'm happy to help. All right. No, hold the lathe, go around the other way. Yep. Just kneel down and just definitely to me. Not so you're in the way of the camera. Just lie down there, <laughs> lie down. Just hang on to the end so it doesn't tip. It shouldn't tip because I've got it chocked now. That's uh, the wrong leg. There we go. Much better with two people. Isn't it great when you can employ child labour? Yeah. All right, I'll go back over there and put those on. Um, actually, just got to find a spanner for the right size. I think they're going to be about, be about a 14 mil or a 13 mil. That could be a 17 mil. That'll do. 17 mil or 11 sixteenths. If, if you're from the age of the dinosaurs? No, there's a lot of people still use Imperial. America uses a lot of Imperial. England, I don't know if England's totally changed over to metric, but see, it's good to know both, actually. Um, okay, no, no, you just hang on the lathe. I'll move your hand. Now hang on to the leg. No, hang on to the lathe and hang on to the leg. There you go. If someone tells you you can't multitask, you tell them you can. Man tells me I can't multitask. <sighs> oh, didn't she send you down here, did she? No, I want to come down. No, oh, you don't want to do schoolwork. <laughs> what made you think that? Because <laughs> I know you pretty well. Uh, yeah. But we can write this off to something or other. Yeah, manual labour. Manual arts. Okay, let it down a bit. That's it. No, hang on to the lathe. Don't let go of the lathe. Okay, now I'll grab the lathe. Can you grab that leg behind you? So, no, just reach down. You don't have to get up. 
That's the lad. Okay. Sit down again. Move your hand because it's going there. Grab hold of that leg. No, that one. That's it. Way to go. What is it? Very tipsy. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Get the scone on that leg. That's it. But Theo coming over this weekend? No, Theo's doing wood show in Sydney this week. But we're going to do a live stream. Not this coming Friday, the following Friday. So we'll be back. The boys will be back. It flew last time I was talking. Yeah. Hope he's got over that. Okay, now these bits here yes. go there. So did you come? Did you enjoy coming out chainsawing on Saturday? Yes. That's good. You were expecting me to feel sore yesterday, didn't you? I was, oh, it, and he didn't feel sore. He's got that to look forward to. What? Pain? No. Okay. Well, the feeling of manual labour. Yep, that's it. You go to bed feeling good tired. People on stream, people on stream know what I'm talking about. And I don't feel good tired afterwards. Oh, that's good. I did feel good tired afterwards. And, and scored a coffee and a hamburger. <laughs> which, I, he sat in front of me and ate and didn't offer me any. Technically, that was my payment. But technically, nothing that was hamburger. Okay. I'll just put these two on the other side and then we'll have a go turn them up. How's that looking there? Can they see what we're doing? Oh, you sausage head. Oh. Well, that was that was really good, wasn't it? Because you didn't get to see any of that. No, we didn't. There you go. They All right. Big <laughs> That's it. We'll do it again. Whoops. Okay, just hang on to the legs. Give me that bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I got sidetracked. I was... I was focused, I was, I was focused. So this little strap here, it goes between these two open-ended oh. bolt slots. Which then gives even tension to what we're doing. And you leave. And we'll tie it all up afterwards. Yeah. It's going to be easier to do that up in the other way. Can give it a leg. There you go. Good stuff. Now, all those are finger tight. Well, make a finger tight. There you go. Got it? Yeah. Oh, hang on, let me. I'll just give him a bit of a nip. It's nice and tight. Oh, wrong one here. Idiot. Where, where did that? There it is. What? Oh, dear, oh dear. Here we go. I'm going to actually do these as tight as I can without the Allen key, and then we'll finish tightening them up. With the Allen key. With the Allen key or hex wrench or whatever you want to call it.
I was about to say that. Okay, so now you want some help flipping it? Well, it would be good. Um, I'm trying to think of what's the best way. Okay, go towards you. All right. Oh, hang on, which way is that? No, we'll go this way. Pick it up, pick it up towards the camera. There you go. Now lay it down. Now pick it up and swing it over. That's it, keep going. You can push as hard as you like. It's not going to move until you move that. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. Well, if you were here at the beginning of the stream, I said that it's got a lot of. <laughs> that was just half my brain falling out. All right. Now, where are we looking? Okay. I just got to change that. Okay. Hop out of the way, don't I? Just Okay, here we are now. There you go. Now just stay there for a bit, mate, until I work out where this is going to go. Yeah. And this is where it's going to live, unless you use it, and then it's going outside. Yeah, I know. There you go, actually. I'm just trying to get it level. That's not too bad. Um. About there. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, here we go. What does that look like? Look, 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 look like. Um, just move that camera back. Uh, like that. Yeah, no, take it back further. In front of that chair. Hey, that's, that's looking good, okay. That's looking pretty schmick. There you go. Ah, done. Now, what else have we got to do? Can you just pick all that <clears throat> plastic up and maybe take it out? Um, Find to the shed? Yeah, just all this stuff too. So we can move, which would be good. Yes, boss. Thank you. Smart with me. Oh, there you go. I'll hold you back. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. the other. That's the fence. There you go. All right. So. Thank you. Oh, okay. We've got to. Can you move the trailer around because I'll put them in the trailer? No, no. Um, put, it, put it in the bin up in the blacksmith shop. That'll be good. So, so we, we're starting to get there. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Look at that. Okay. What else are we going to do? Oh, I'll catch up on chat. Uh, -da -da -da. Um, The clips was pretty good and not to know oh, well, that one's in the clips. That's a 50, you know, it's a record. 52 and a half, not an eclipse. Eclipse are good though. Um, yeah, oh, it drives you nuts in and out. I'll, I'll pass you good day on when he comes back, Ray. 
<laughs> It'll cop that one. It is easy to have an extra pair of hands, Rob, I agree. Only he's meant to be up there doing schoolwork because we're homeschooling, but he doesn't want to work today, so I'd say Nan sent him down here with me. Um... Oh, no, nothing wrong with Wentworth either, Paul. I can remember my, my days in the green machine. All the Land Rovers were BSW, British Standard Whitworth. Great things. Uh, uh, I see a bloke gave me the other day, I got a toolbox full of spanners. And, uh, yeah, majority of them are all Whitworth. All synchrome too. Anthony needs to be careful with nothing falling on his feet. No, Anthony takes... Oh, oh, just because I'm wearing thongs doesn't mean I like, know... What happens if something falls on your foot, Anthony? I take all the blame. Right. It's my fault. Are you allowed to whinge because it hurts? No. Why? Because it was my fault. There you go. That Come here. That is what the younger generation need to learn called personal responsibility. There you go. Although you did, you did have your... Steel cat work boots on when we were out in the bush chainsawing. And, and a great big log dropped on his foot and I said, I bet you're pleased you got work boots on. I was actually. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yes, apparently it does. James, we'll get there in a minute when I get that on there. Oh, Ray said good day, Anthony. Um... Eclipse are owned by record, I think. Yeah, no, I think Ir well, oh, it's, a, it's a long story, but Irwin bought out record, and I think record bought marples and possibly had Eclipse, and that's why there's a distinction now between record and record power, and record power are now green and yellow, and from my understanding, they are the original people that used to work at the Blue Record Company. If I'm correct, that's what I'm led to believe. Uh, have you ever trained an apprentice? Yes, and they all left me. I'm trying to train this one. We'll see. Now, look, unfortunately, um, I've, I've worked with apprentices before, but actually when I was a mechanic, not when I was a woodworker. But what I do, I don't think there's a trade for any longer, which is sad, fine furniture work. Um, the classification for furniture maker now is either a wood machinist or a cabinet maker. And cabinet makers aren't what cabinet makers used to be 50 years ago. So there you go. Anyway, let's keep going and put this, the motor on this little sucker. Oh, the motor's, the motor's incredibly light, actually. Is it? Mm, well, you pick it up, you tell me. Mm. It is, isn't it? It feels like nothing. It feels like a keel or something. Oh, it's a bit more than a keel. It might be about eight. Two. No, seven or eight kilos. But <laughs> it hasn't got a size on it, but I can look that up. All right, what are we up to? We don't want that one because we're not putting the extended bed on. Oh, we've got to tighten all that up. That's what we'll... Yes. We'll do that directly. Can you just pick up that live centre that dropped down there, please? This one? Yep, put it up on the bench and we'll go back over to the lathe and tighten it up. Where's my 17 mil spignola? I have no idea. Probably still on the Um, no. Oh! This is so like you. Don't you start bad enough putting up with your nan. <laughs> okay. Exactly. We'll tighten these up. Uh, see, I can say that because I know she doesn't watch. Are you sure? Because I've actually got it running on my computer. Yeah, she, I can guarantee she won't be watching. Oh, is that why you came down? Because you saw I was putting the lathe together. No, actually. Whoops. Didn't I actually came down to see what you guys were doing? There you go. Well, don't stand right in front of the camera. I'm not. Different chats. No, there's only one chat. Sure about that? Yep. Because you got top chat and all chat. Yeah, that's alright. There's only one chat room. Yeah, there's only one chat room. Yeah, members have got top chat. Uh, oh, 
Okay, they're done. Can we do these ones here? If you want to. Hey, there's nothing wrong. See, you getting the young bloke on the spanners. Good practice. I've done this for a while. You'll be, you'll find you're better off turning the spanner, holding the Allen key in there and turning the spanner. You can get more purchase that way. Then, then just rotate the spanner. Oh. There you go, we'll have a split stream here. Oh no, we can do that one. There you go. What? That's the... I'll just give that a bit of a squirt. I've got a fair bit of... WD-40? No, this is degreaser. It's cheaper than WD-40. Uh, there we go. That's a tool rest. I don't know what this is. You got two tool rests, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Oh. Oh. Wonder who's calling you. Oh, I don't know. Excuse me. Gotta have a gotta have a chat. Hello, this is Steve. Oh, I'm well. You want to say hello to the world? You're live streaming at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Shannon said hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, it should be, um, if it's a 0.325 bar, that should take the, um, dum, 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 the chain. Because that's the chain size, so they've got a bar size for the chain. Was that Bunnings? No, no, no. Oh. No, I was going to say, because if it was them, I wouldn't take any notice. Um, have you got the other one with you? No, it's at home. I'm thinking maybe I'll just go home and grab it and take it down. Yeah. Uh, can you get the same brand as the one you've got? I don't know. Because, look, you're, be you're better off taking it with you, because if you're going for a different brand, then the mounting holes might not line up. All right. Best idea. Let me know how you go. Thanks, Steve. All right, Shannon. See ya. See you, Bye. Is that why we all came to the same, from the same company? Yeah, that's because I like still. Uh, that was a, la a, 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 a lass who's got a chainsaw and I sharpened it the other day and the bar had gone. And here's a bit of F-I-Y. Um, hey, I've already... Oh, you're still going? Can I just have a... Let's see how we go. Tell me if I did anything wrong. Oh, no, you can just, you can just be a tad tighter. That oh, okay. I accept criticism. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. When did that happen? <laughs> uh, it's all right, you did well. Thank you. <coughs> and the last one. There we go. Oh, terrific. We're back to that in a tick. Um, yeah, so she had a 0.325 chain that I sharpened. And there was another chain that came with it. She was running on the same chainsaw. Oh, and I looked at it and it was, no, it wasn't a 0.325. It was an actually a 3.8p. Now that will run, but the trouble is your drive sprocket is different size to the teeth that actually run the chain. And what was happening, because the chain was uh, a narrower, it was slopping or moving in the bar and it actually bent the channel in the bar open, which wasn't very good. And she said, well, can I use it? I said, well, put it this way, I won't use it. And she said, well, what'll happen? I said, well, 
You could hurt yourself, but most likely what's going to happen is the chain will jump out of the, the bar and give you a scare. Next day, you've got a phone call. Guess what? The chain jumped out of the bar and gave me a scare. So she was just buying a new chain. So if you're doing, if you've got chainsaws and you're new to chainsaws, always make sure you have the right chain for the bar or else you can get in all sorts of trouble. The most common um, chainsaw blade in Australia for a big chainsaw, or a big chainsaw, a 20 inch bar, is a 3.8. And then you go down to a 0.325, which is a little bit smaller. And then a lot of the domestic chainsaws, uh, 14 inch, 12 inch, um, some of the 16 inch, is a 3.8 P, which is a 3.8 tooth, but it's got a low profile and it's a lot smaller gauge. And then there's one they have for, um, you put on the brush cutters for cutting limbs, tree lopping and that, and that's a quarter inch. So try not to get those confused. The other one for the real big chainsaws is the 404, but as a rule, I don't have any 404s. Mine are all 3 8 except for an Oleo Mac, which is great. It's a little um, 16, 16 inch bar, I think. I think it is. It's a 0.325, but what I use that for and I did, I needed it on the weekend, didn't I? Yeah. Is when I'm cutting, sometimes, sometimes if you're not diligent enough, you cut and there's a stress on the tree that you didn't see and it'll jam your um, bar. And if you haven't got another chainsaw there, you can get in all sorts of trouble. So I always carry the point three two five just for knocking little limbs off and also for getting me out of trouble. There, anyway, that's a little side issue. See, that's just, this life happens. John Lennon, he was right. Random. Random, yeah, random accident. I have no idea what that is, but I guess we're going to find out very soon. Yeah. Let me turn the page. Who sang that? I don't know. Oh, John English. Turn the page, there you go. This is before your time. I know. See, but you like some of the old songs. <laughs> you have to because... Because <laughs> I live with old... old yeah, da, 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 be quiet, I feed you. No, technically Nanny does. Oh, yeah, good on you. All right, now let's see, what do we need? We got that on. Yep. So, we've got to put the motor in. Over. Let's go and have a look. I've got no idea. Me either. Um, oh, hang on, what have we got here? That looks, that looks as if it could be something we need. Let's just see how we go first. Okay. All right, let's go back over to the lathe and we'll have a have a look, see, see what's happening. Um, no, it was Shannon. I'm sorry, I didn't enunciate. Hang on, I'll do that again. I'm sorry, no, that was Shannon. I didn't enunciate. Ah, oh, she's a great girl. She came round and uh, doing some blacksmithing the other day. It was really good fun. No, we had a good time. Here we go. Well, personally, I prefer the music of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I do like the... Oh, yeah, I like 60s, 70s, and 80s. I don't, I'm not... Uh, or, fay, or fond of the 90s. Or the 1000s. Yeah. I like Guns N' Roses. Yeah, Guns N' Roses are good. And who are the other ones from there? Bon Jovi, Van Halen. ACDC. Akadaka. There you go. All right. Um, uh, thanks, Dad. <coughs> right, now, what are we up to here? The end, the motor. Yeah, well, we'll just move, move this along there. That can go there. Now, okay. This you can't see, um, and at the moment I'm not sure how to do that, so I'll bring this around here so you can see the mounting of it. Okay. Phillips head. Mm -hmm. 
Now. Because we've got to open up that up so we can see. Oh, well, hey, that's a good idea. You hang on to that there. He must have been a crook bloke, eh? To have no. a screwdriver named after his head. Phillips <laughs> head. <laughs> and smacked in the head with some. Yeah, uh, Phillips head. Oh! <laughs> Alright, you just worry about hanging on to that and let me worry about hanging on to this. Okay, so this is starting to make sense now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that um, goes there. I don't know what goes there. All right, hold that there. Got it. You didn't get any other wheels on any of that? Okay. Okay, what I'm doing here is mounting this on here. That's your locking nut for when you're changing your belt speeds over. And then I've got a, another nut down the back here that I'll put on shortly. Sorry. Yeah, let's go. There you go. And I'm taking that, that care of that one I've got in my room. Alright. Now, this one goes shell. It goes there, I'm guessing. Okay, and there's a the belt. And there is the belt. Had been the operative word. <laughs> had been the adjective. No, had would have been an adverb. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to do. All right, you, you have a look, see, because you're a better finder -er than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly finding your stuff. Found it. There you see, you're a good lad. There you go, it's up. You want me to? Okay, we'll put this in. No, no, that's all right. I'll just fit this on Sorry. to there, we'll put on medium speed. Yeah, medium should do me. Okay, look at. Okay, hop out of the way and I'll just tighten this one up. Oh, Whoops. Okay. So now that's... Whoops. That's looking like on the inside there. We've got the belt on the middle range. We've got a locking index here, which is awfully helpful. And that's your lock nut. And I'm just going to put the other mounting nut on this side. size, which is down here, which you can't see. So I'll take this off so you can see it. Do you want me to hold the camera? No, that's all right. Okay, so I'm just coming around here and just screwing that onto there. Thank goodness for gravity. <laughs> hey, did you know without gravity the sky would be full of dead birds? Now, there's Actually, a thought. Actually, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. Don't argue with me. <laughs> Everyone would be dead. And technically, there would be no climate. Okay. Okay, well that's all mounted there. I'm just wondering if this has anything to do with this. Yeah, I think. Which it does, look at that. And there we have the swivel head. You asked me before if it had a swivel head? Well, it does. Leave it up. All right. Whoops, sorry. It's okay, Papa. Oh. At least you didn't hear me in the scorn. Well, that's true. Okay, so there we go. This little thing here is your lock. It's 
so you can swivel it out. So if you want outboard turning, one would presume you can turn it all the way around. I'm not sure, or if not to there. But most of my work I do is spindle work, so it is going to be in that position. Yeah. Um, what else do we need to know? Power points. We've put some power cords in it. Hey, this, this is fun, isn't it? Uh, what is the throw on the tailstock? I think it's about 300. Yeah, you'd easily get, if you wanted an inches, you'd easily get 12 inches out of that. It's seven and a half from the centre to the bed. So it's pretty, pretty... Um, Fun? No, what's the word? Um, generous was the word I was looking for. Pretty generous. Okay. We're getting to the stage where we might even fire it up. Can I fire it up? Um, you can fire it up and we might turn something on it. <laughs> but I will turn something on it. If we're going to do that. Fine. I don't know if that's... That's got to be the right way, isn't it? It is. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, that's right. But... But what? That's around backwards. What do you mean? Isn't the... May I? You may. No, because that's how you stand. I'm just, I'm just, I'm yeah. just wondering if that's meant to be on the other side. Probably is. But then that's, that I reckon is on the right. I reckon it's on the wrong end. I don't know. Hang on, let's have a look at the... You're going to have a look at the brochure here. Oh, no. That's around backwards. Yeah, but, 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 but. But what? But, 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 but. That's, I would have thought that would have gone. Ah, oh well. I don't know. Oh, I know what it is. No, it's all right. What? Um, I think Theo's got an extension on his, which is what's going to make a difference. So, no, that's all right. Yeah, that's, and you're right, that's got to be turned around so we can do that. Um. Wait on, just let me, just let me go here. I'm oh, still looking. Uh, where's my... Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I'm cheating. You're Googling. It's what we'll do. This is what we'll do. Google. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm just trying something. We'll see. It's not going to do what I want to do. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, no, nah, that's all right. That's all right, we'll do it this way. So, out the way, mate, please. Now, we're going to have to spin it around this way. Okay. So, you hang on to that end. Let me get... Walk around that way. Or else I'm going to be going the wrong way. So 
the hole, just move this here. And we'll, you pick it up. You're going to have to pick it up pretty high. I know. All right. Okay. Oops, sorry. Pick, look out for that camera cable. That's all right. Okay. Oh, I forgot you could do that. There you go. Um, move it forward a little bit. Um, just pick it off that piece of timber too. There you go. Okay. Like yep. You might want to move the. Uh, there you go. All right. Okay. How's that looking? Yeah. Okay, you want to move somewhere. I don't know where. There you go. Oh, we have, and he's been joining in, and there's been comments, and yeah. So no, it's all good. You're going to come and say hello. Come and say hello. Can't, can't have... I think everybody's distracting you today. Oh, no, he wants to be distracting. They're, they're, they're letting Annie in there. They've seen you. Oh. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. He's in the back. They, I, they, I love doing this. It's really gross. It's kids. Yeah, it's kids. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. oh, yeah, he, like should, he, he should be that lucky to have someone like me. Anyway. All right. No, it's good. Yeah, Ray said good day, Sue. Uh, yeah, I'll finish there for the moment. You can give Nana a hand. You can come down and play. I'll be stopped streaming soon. You can come and have a go. Yay! All right. Um, Theo's ways from memory he can do a meter on standard. He doesn't use the extension, but I believe has one of it. Well, um... Yeah, he has got an extension on the Herald because he's got one of these too. But I don't think I'll need an extension. So what's the, the length we've got here? Between centres, comfortably 400. We'll put the centres in and have a... Have a look, see. Dog in there, center in there. Uh, yeah, well, according to that, 420. So 400 um, would be pretty darn good. Is that working or did I just, oh no, it is good. All right, I'm just gonna degrease it down a bit. And then I might put a bit of timber in there and we'll see if I can turn something. Yeah, turn it on, of course. And it's like anything you knew you got to play with it to get used to it. Ugh. Oh, okay, that's your face plate. That obviously comes off. Oh, we've got to put that chuck on too. So all in all, I'm happy to say it's pretty easy to put together. And it's a nice unit. The finish on it is lovely. Um, you know, a lot of things that you buy, you 
We'll do that. Uh, actually, we'll have a look at the chuck in the tick. You know a lot of things you buy when you, you, know, you rub your hand over it and it's got sharp edges? I can't find any sharp edges on that, which I think is a real benefit. And it shows pride in manufacturing, just to get the, a, a nice finish. Even that face plate is just finished so nicely. Um, might as well, we'll plug it in, that's what we'll do. Where's, oh, where's, see I need my grandson now, I've lost all the cords. <laughs> Where did I put the cords? No, I'm blaming, blaming Susie for that, because I was, I was all ready to hot the trot, and she walks in and, there we go. Where's the power point? Oh, I've got one over here. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Do need, do need a different power point. There we go. I've plugged the wrong one in, so, I, so that's a um, universal plug, which I did have one of those converters around here because sometimes you, you get these plugs and they just, oh, excuse me, and they just don't fit. Yeah, because you can get um, universal sockets, which are no good, but then you get this universal plug, which fits in the universal socket, and then that's the Australian configuration for a plug there, which is, what have we got? That's your live, or your live, neutral, where are we? Live, neutral, earth. But I've just noticed... I've got an Australian plug that goes with it. So I'll go and plug that one in. I'm getting all serious and excited now. All right, let's go. switch here too. I obviously haven't got something engaged. Oh, I haven't tensioned the belt. I'll put some tension on the belt. And take that out. Close that, put that on, press on. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Well, emergency stop. Emergency. What do you mean that's in a ridiculous place? Well, it's easy to get at. It's a good place. Anyway, let me just continue to clean it down. And I don't know what that's, I'll just continue to clean this down. And then I'll get a bit of timber and see if I can do something with it. <laughs> I can't find the degreaser. Here it is. Oh, hang on, what have we got here? Uh, 
Yeah, this this you can turn on the end of the lathe. That'll that head swivels, so you can do that. There she is, she's gone. I'll tell everyone said hello, and she shot it. Now Anthony, he, he went out, went out on his first date on the weekend, and he's a bit love struck, so it's very hard to get him to focus. <laughs> Good night, Doc. I'll catch you later on, mate. All the best. Thanks for dropping in. I, I like I like the duck. The duck. Emergency stop. You just get out of the way quick. Uh. No, no. So that sounds like, I don't know if that's changing weather or we're getting rain. Sounds a bit that way on the roof. Or ring Theo, or ring Theo up, that's all doing the tick. Gee, <coughs> 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 it slides nicely. Yeah, I've done all that and you didn't see any of it. I'll do it again and show you. It slides so nicely. And if you want, There's, you can turn it right around so you can actually do um, a bowl on this end, but I can't because I'm running out of cord space. A Theo might do one, but I definitely won't. I'll just lock that up there. It's indexed too, so you can, you can feel it um, when it's at whatever angle you want it to be at, which is really nice. And the indexing itself, if you're doing, um, you, know, you want to put a certain amount of holes in whatever, this indexer here, see how that, hang on, let me, which way, let me get this to go. If you do that, it'll lock in. Should lock in. There you go. It's indexed. I don't know how many indexes it is. Hang on, 21. Okay, 24. So if you wanted to do, um, I don't know, four equally spaced holes or whatever, you index it there. It locks in and then at 24 you move it around six castellations which are marked here and then there's another indexing mark and so on and so forth. Uh, very very schmick. So what else? Oh we'll do the, we'll put the, um, actually yeah I will, I'll ring, I'll ring, I'll ring Theo up, wait a minute, see if he's there. He was riddled with the flu last time I was talking to him. Oh. Well, he sort of answered the phone. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Are you alive and well? Uh, 
I am just alive. Hang on a second. I've got to uh, find my phone. I'm just answering on my watch. Uh, <laughs> Dick Tracy, eat your heart out. Hang on. Oh, there you go. There you go, mate. I'm live. We've just built your life. Oh. Our life, joint life, everyone's excited. They want to know when you when you are going to finish your music stand. <laughs> I think you've got that wrong, B one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like I like B four. <laughs> Ray said hello. Um, oh, good day, yeah, good day, Ray. Oh, the gang's there, Ray. Eh? Yeah, no, it's all happening. I'm just, um, uh, I didn't get the extension table. Do you reckon I should get an extension table? Will you use an extension table? The extension, well, it's it's the lathe is pretty good. You can you can turn a drumstick on it. It's pretty long. Um, yeah, I've got one. I've uh, I've got one on my lathe. Well, I've got one for my lathe, but I've never had the need to put it on because. Um, it's got a fair bit of length on it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Well, that's the questions we just had, and I, I reckon if I need anything big, I'll just go to the Simtech and use it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no true. Because you can turn, you can turn. You know, stool, stool leg, uh, vases. Uh, you know, you name it. It's pretty well. It's, yeah. it's a good. Right, 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 right. Just put up in the chat room. Who is going to finish the music stand? Not Theo, that's for sure. <laughs> I've done my part, Steve. You know that's up to you. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I might have lost that bit. You might have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you excited? Are you excited about doing a live stream with me again? Oh yeah, no. Won't it be great? Won't it be great? We just have to lock Bob out. That's all. No, why, why we're letting him in when you do sit-ups. Just for the sit-ups. Just for the sit-ups. We've learned. <laughs> oh, no, it's great. Great to catch catch up again and uh, looking forward to playing with that uh, another Coronet Herald. That they're a, uh, a great little lathe. I've just uh, delivered my box uh, ready to go to Sydney, so I'll be performing down there um, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So there you go. If you're in Sydney, go in and say good day to Theo. Yeah, yeah. Be the, what's, it, what's it called now? Artisan Show or something or other. Timber Tools and Artisan Show. Timber Tools and Artisan Shows at the Rose Hill yeah. Race Course. That's oh, it. Yeah. That's it. There you go. Starting 10 o'clock Friday. All and, right. Uh, looking forward to that. I've got yeah all the bits and pieces. I'm going to be playing with some of that beef wood we got out of Texas, turning a yo-yo, and then I'm using shadows to turn an egg and... I'm doing some baubles all, as per usual. All of which he's going to do again on the live stream, isn't he? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm turning a, uh, oh, a, a beautiful uh, burl bowl with wings. Uh, that'll be good fun. And, and finishing with, at, at 3.30 with a toe ball cap, which everybody should have one, a wooden toe ball cap. Well, there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll mm -hmm. just... I was just ringing up to see if you wanted anything else in this lathe. So I'm going to put a bit of timber on it now and see if I can have a woodchuck. Um, okay. uh, remember red to red, black to black, flick the switch, stand right back. <laughs> oh, no, we've already had that. Couldn't find the right plug. <laughs> I was just going to strip the wire. No, we won't go there. All right, I'll, yeah. give, you a, I'll give you a call when I finish streaming. Shouldn't be long. Okay. Cheers, Good mate. Steve. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye. There you go. Theo's all excited. Oh, the bed's getting closer. The bed's getting closer, eh? Right? Yeah, I've decided I'm going to do a lot of metal work on it. Oh, I've got, I have got coming. They're the most gorgeous. Um, 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 uh, New Guinea rosewood. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do the legs out of. All right, I'm going to throw something on here and see if I can get a spindle going. Of some sort or other. I don't know what I need. Let me, let me. Oh, no, I was going to do the chuck first, wasn't I? Let's have a look at the chuck. Oh, here we go. Oh. If you're in Brisbane, too, by the way, Woodwork Machinery Plus, Bruce and Bill Spencer out there at Dara, they carry all the record stuff. And that's, that's the scroll, the, um, what should we call? Oh, there you go, I'm giving them a plug too. Woodwork Machinery Plus. There you go. You can see that there. All right, we'll open this up and we'll put all this together. Oh, that's a flash-looking key, isn't it? Hey, what a 
flash looking key that is. I'm on the wrong one. What am I on? I want to be on that one. There you go. That's the flash looking key. And that's the chuck. Again, it's got all that lovely preservative grease on it. Now let me move it down here so we can see a bit better. There you go. And jaws. Here's my knife because I can. They are numbered too, are they? No. Yes, they are. When you're putting this together, they've got numbers on the jaws that correspond to the numbers on these jaws. So number three there, you can see number three there, corresponds to Number three, there. So you put three to three, there you go. Two to two, one to one, four to four. Get the screws. Oh, for goodness sake. There you go. Got a little set screws in there. Good thing about this is, um, because it's a record power chuck, it's made to fit the record power lathe. Whereas with my SimTech, I've got a different chuck and I had to get an adapter so I could change from a uh, whatever it is, I think it's a one inch to a 30M or something or other. Which was a bit of a problem trying to find someone that actually carried that. But I eventually got it. So it's all good. these in and, and they do give you the allen key for this and what I'll do I'll turn a bit of timber I'm not going to touch the the um, tools we'll just take them straight out and see how they go I might have to use one of my other tools because unfortunately when I went to pick this up, they didn't have uh, the profile lathe tools that I wanted, but they've ordered me a spindle set, which has gouges, cutoffs, and skews, which is generally all I use. There's a little bit of a nip to make sure they're nice and secure. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Go. This part here is if you want to put a solid square chunk of timber in, whether you're doing, I don't know, I guess a bowl or something, and that actually fits. As I said, I'm not a wood turner, nor do I really ever want to be. That fits 
in there like so. And then you, that's the left hand thread, you screw your timber onto that and then that locks it hard and you can start turning. Now I've got a little grub screw here. I'm not sure where exactly that goes. I'm sure if I read the manual I'll find it. And there's a face plate that obviously can go on there and you can drill your bit of timber through the back onto that. That goes there. There's your face plate. Again, I'm not sure where that grub screw goes, but I will look at it later on. Um, I think that's it. All right, I'll put this on. We'll go back over to the lathe. I'll see if I'm finding a bit of timber and we'll have a go. Let's have a go. That goes on there, that goes on there, that goes on there. Oh, must have a micro switch on it. What a great idea. That's quiet. Must admit, I, I do like how quiet it is. <whistles> well, I haven't looked at any of the speeds or anything, so I will endeavour to do that. I should have asked there what's the best speed, shouldn't I? That on there. Grab a bit of timber if I can find any square stuff. Oh. That's a bit of ordinary, 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 ordinary. I've got square stuff, but it's all too big square stuff. So, oh, I'm not turning that. There you go. Right. Turn a bit of that. Oh, dear. You'd think I'd have a bit of square stuff around here, but evidently I don't, so I'm just going to rip a bit up on the bandsaw. For the purpose of the exercise, I think this will be fine. I can't get to any other saw. Most likely got the worst bit of timber you could ever want to turn. It's a bit of New Guinea. New Guinea, um, what do you call it, stuff. New Guinea walnut. Those. 
Mark, I send the point in there with a the punch. A little bit off, but she'll be right. Oh, cool. I saw the reverse button tango. I'll give it a go. Oh, I've got a good use for Allen keys too. <laughs> I, I thought with blacksmithing, I'm going to flatten them out and make leather openers and oyster openers and stuff out. Anyway, let's go. Without any further ado, we'll see. We'll see if we can do something with this. I'm full of fear and intrepidation, believe me. Just to make sure that one's locked. That sits there, that's good. A little bit off, Sandra, but she'll be right. <laughs> the good thing about this is I can do this, and then you can <laughs> see Theo doing it properly very shortly. Oh, I reckon that's pretty... Pretty close enough. I'll just grab a couple of my tools, but we'll give the record tools a go too. It's just I didn't get... Um, a gouge. I just got a couple of skews. So we'll get that one out. I'll tell you one thing I do love with their, their tools, one particular tool I love. It's this one, the record cutoff chisel. It is, oh. He's so fine, you don't lose a lot of stock, and you can do a nice clean cut off. That's it there. Look how thin that is. Compared to the average ones you get, which are really thick looking things. But no, that's lovely. And we'll take this one off. So I haven't sharpened these, these are straight out of the packet and we'll see how they go. I even bought some new calipers just for the event. Yeah, where's this? It was another, 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 another. That's a scraper. There was another skew, but I don't know where it is. But I don't think it really matters. Because we're just taking it for a test drive. Okay. Here we go. You reckon, I, you reckon I'm bad? You reckon I'm bad on the router? You wait until you see me on the lathe. Oh, better go and get a face shield, I suppose. I Theo nagging me otherwise. Oh, dear. No, actually, face shields aren't a, aren't a bad idea. You don't want things to come flying up and smacking you in the face. So, face shield. This is a polycarbonate one, which is good. I'm just looking for that other... Lincoln skew. It will turn up when it's ready to turn up, obviously. 
But anyway, all right, let's let's go, Geronimo. Whoa, what do you want? That one there. <laughs> Oh, that was a good start. I must admit it is so nice and quiet. Okay, here we go. Record skew straight out of the bag. Not overly fond of the harmonics, but that's the timber. timber <laughs> but anyway there you go it's fun to use and it works very very quiet I'm pretty impressed with that actually I think it's nice oh no doubt when I finish here I'll go out and the grandson will get into it and off he goes whoops there you go I'm, I'm talking away and I'm wasn't even this. There you go. I've thrown it away already. So it works. Lovely little lathe. Very, very quiet. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to know that. And I'm sure my grandson will too. If he's done any school work, he can go and play with it now. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It was fun to put together. It was something I had to do. Uh, next stream, hopefully, I'll be doing that music um, strum stick thing and show you how to make one of those and I'm gonna now when I knock off I'm gonna go and do some editing so I can put some new videos up for all of you because it's not that I'm slack it's just that I've been busy but can start to see a little bit 
of uh, the light at the end of the tunnel now, which is, which is really, really good. So once again, yeah, record Herald Coronet Lathe. What an absolute little great bit of gear that is. What's the wrong one? Get there. Um, and it's easy to put together. What's that? I've been streaming for nearly three hours. I've been dribbling garbage for about an hour. So two hours, hour and a half if you're really focused on it. And it would be together. And you can start making shavings and things. So lovely lathe at the moment. I'm very impressed with it. I don't think there's anything I don't like about it. Except um, I don't know how to use it properly yet. So that's my fault, not any fault of record power. But as you saw too, the tools straight out of the box. Yep, didn't need much work at all. Admittedly, that was rubbishy timber I was using. I should use a nice bit of timber. If I got a bit of coach wood or jarrah, it would have been different. But hey, that's the way it goes. That's it. I think, yeah, if you enjoy what you've been watching, uh, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification so you get notification when we're on. If you want to become a member of the Woodworking Masterclass channel, please hit the join button. What does happen and has happened in the past, but hasn't for three weeks, and I understand that, is I upload videos to the members channel. And if the members have any questions, I actually make a dedicated video as best I can to answer those questions and upload it into the community so we're building a knowledge bank for woodworking down the track. Um, plus you get bloopers and other things that may go wrong or may not go wrong. And it's nice to be a part of something and I greatly appreciate it because it allows me to get more gear and buy more timber and continue to do what I'm doing, which I really, really love. And I couldn't do it without everyone out there getting on board and having a chat and giving me the support you do, whether it's through subscriptions or memberships or emails or comments on the videos, it doesn't matter. All of it means a great deal to me. So I thank you very much for your patronage and your company and your patience. But in the meantime, this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having you in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. So till then, good night, Tango. Good night, Ray. Here we go. Thanks, James, Tawny. Uh, I guess it'll be a race between you and DHL. <laughs> I'm betting Steve has a DHL depot nearby to him. Oh, no, I don't think I have. I don't know. What's the DHL? Awesome stream is usually Steve. Now, when can I send the DHL to the Oh, I'll let you know on that one. Actually, I'll give you Theo's address. You can go pick up on your side. No, I won't. It's all right, Theo. You don't have to have the Alsatians out the front. So anyway, that's it. Thank you, everyone. It's been great fun as usual. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. So God bless. I'll catch you all very, very soon. Bye for now.